All right, what's going on YouTube? So as you can see, the title of the video talks about the technology in a Mercedes, and I'm sitting here in my Challenger. Well, here's a fun fact. The Challenger actually shares parts with the Mercedes. So to a certain degree, it wouldn't be clickbait if I was talking about the interior in this car, right? Of course it would. So I'm going to quit the fun and games and get to the real video. But I kind of wanted to start off with the interior in this car because the car may be cool. But as you can see, there's not much technology. So I really wanted to kind of go ahead and show, you know, what I was experiencing from uh, going from the Challenger to the uh, Mercedes CLA 250 for the weekend. And, and you can really get an idea of just kind of looking right here. There's a huge difference in what you'll see in that Mercedes compared to what you see right here. So, without wasting any more time, let's check out the real star of this video. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get it started. And we're going to check out these features in this uh, 2018 CLA 250. Currently is searching for my uh, phone, but I made sure to go ahead and turn that off. So eventually it'll kind of go past this screen. But you know, it's good that immediately it reaches and tries to connect to your phone as soon as you start the car up, which is probably the, the norm for most of these new cars. Off the top, I'll say I originally wasn't a fan of the design of how the touch screen actually it's not even a touch screen which is also something that I was kind of not a fan of at first but overall I'm just I wasn't a fan of how the screen kind of sticks out on the dash and it kind of looks like you know an iPad or, or just any kind of tablet that's just been stuffed right in the center of the dash but uh you know I'm, I'm kind of warming up to it but overall I would prefer for a, a little bit more of a cleaner more integrated kind of design Nonetheless, I still feel like there's uh, you know, some pretty cool features and options that come with um, you know, the car and the graphics of the screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick the uh, main button here. So after pressing the main button to kind of get to your options, you have navigation, radio, media, telephone your vehicle settings if you want to tag an uh, artist or track in a song and then you have your previous destina destinations points of interest uh, navigate to home and an address search now when you kinda as you can see there's an arrow, an arrow that presses uh, or points up and if you kinda take the little uh, swivel knob and push up it'll kind of give you the option to delete, move, or rename each icon. And basically what I'm using to control that screen is this swivel knob down here. And basically it kind of turns right, left, push it forward, backwards, and you can actually press in on it as well. And as you can see, I switched to radio. We grill year round. Fire up the grill with animal sweets. Yeah, baby. All right. So now that we got that radio turned back off. So from this screen, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and kind of click on each one and shows what it brings up. Navigation is going to try and connect. Unfortunately, this vehicle does not have the uh, media card to, to give us the navigation options. And as you can see here, it says no media card containing navigation software inserted. So unfortunately, we won't get to check that out. Next is the radio option, which of course, if I click on that, it'll uh, give you the option to kind of switch between radio stations. Media, click on that. As you can see, it's searching for my phone. Switch out of that. 
and here is where you can uh if you have a phone selected and connected basically or if you want to connect your device this is where you go for all of that and as you can see you know once connected you can search for name and all of that and one of the coolest features here is a uh, vehicle once you're into vehicle settings as you can see uh, the car actually kinda cruises up onto the screen and you have uh, your dynamic settings consumption information an operator's manual set the time vehicle settings so we're going to go ahead and start with the the dynamic select and clicking on this so once you enter into your dynamic select screen there's a few options you can change uh, the first that is shown is your eco start stop function and you can either uh, choose to keep that on which means every time you come to a start the vehicle will automatically shut off and start back up when you uh, press the uh, gas to accelerate or basically just kind of leave it turn it off and uh, the car will always stay on uh, personally um, I have been using the, the start and stop function but I'm not a fan of it and if I was actually own this car as, as a long-term vehicle I guess once I see just how much it saves on gas that would really determine if I kept it on because I'm really not a fan of it but uh, I guess it, you know it, it doesn't hurt to have it on it's just something you have to get used to but uh, basically in order to kind of change any feature you just click on it and then you know use the swivel knob to either turn it on or off and uh, once you make your selection tap in on it and you can kind of go to the next one which is climate control and click on it clicking on that you'll have uh, regular or economy mode with your climate control now I just kind of left that set at uh, comfort next we have your uh, drive settings so you have comfort sport manual and eco of course you know with manual that's more so you choosing to use your paddle shifters to uh, shift through the gears eco I really haven't tried but I'm sure that's probably going to allow the transmission to uh, shift and, and you know whatever other qualities that would come with uh, eco mode to basically get you the best gas mileage comfort is what I, I have been using so long as I've been driving this vehicle for the last two days and I've tried out sport where it seems to kind of stay in the gears a little bit longer and I guess give you that sporty feel but with this uh, turbo 4 I, I don't know it just really didn't do much for me so I kind of left it in comfort see what we have next steering your steering can either be uh, switched from comfort to sport honestly uh, I haven't tried out the sport and the steering so I'll kind of have to check that out and I'll, I'll put that in my overall review where I'm talking about you know just the car in general but this is also something that I've kind of kept in sport for the most part and uh, it looks like the four options you have when you go into the uh, dynamic select settings with the car so let's back out of here consumption basically it'll tell you your miles per gallon I, it looks like it's doing within the last 15 minutes and since I actually haven't been anywhere today um, this is basically no information so um, not too much I can say about this now and it's definitely not showing my driving habits but um, th I guess this would be something good to know when you're switching between the different uh, modes and seeing exactly how much more gas or how much you know you're saving based off of whatever mode you select the car to be in as far as you know your drive and steering and all of that let's back out of here operator's manual let's see what we have with this it 
looks like this is something that's pretty cool and kind of breaks down what the uh, car has to offer. So in case you weren't familiar with what it is that your car has to offer, you have a in-car display that'll tell you what's what, which is pretty cool. Take a look at that eco start and stop that I was talking about. So basically what it's saying is it uh the vehicle switches automatically, switches off automatically when it's stationary. So in traffic jams, traffic lights. And this uh, reduces fuel consumption and also emissions and saves on fuel costs. So, you know, there's definitely some good in uh, using that feature. And once you get used to it, I'm sure it's no big deal. Back out of here. So, let's just kind of telematics. Wi Fi in your car. So, looks like some of these are set with the option for you to have Wi-Fi. I'm not sure this car has it though. Design, convenience, intelligent drive. There's that telematics again. So basically, um, this is definitely a great tool for someone that just purchased a uh, a nice new Mercedes and is unfamiliar with the technology you know you have it right here and you can can learn right from the comfort of your car bookmarks so basically it looks like you can use this to kinda set bookmarks for certain areas of the manual so you can have quick access to it which is also pretty nice if you kinda new to it and you wanna just save certain areas where you might be curious at some point you have that bookmark option and then help more stuff with uh, talking about the manual so there's definitely a lot of on-screen help to to get you familiar with what's going on with your car And then language settings. Take a look at that. English, Spanish, and French. Content. Looks like this is more uh, information about uh, any and everything that's offered with the vehicle so you definitely have to give Mercedes a lot of credit for you know creating something that's uh you know advanced with technology but give you the information so you can learn it easily without um, going crazy and this is all within the operators manual and you can do a visual search vehicle interior side windows exterior mirrors, driver's door and emergency release, wheels and tires, refueling, your various sensors, towing and tow starting, exterior lighting, trunk, rear window defroster, flat tire, doors, windshield, your engine compartment, and the Mercedes-Benz logo. So let's see what that is. It speaks on maintenance.
vehicle equipment. So basically your owner's manual, operator's manual, I guess same thing, definitely gives you a, a very detailed view of what's going on with the car and lots of different ways to to get to the information that you're looking for. So that's definitely pretty nice. Let's take a look at the time setting and see if it's just more than changing the time itself. So you have the automatic time settings, time zone, daylight saving time, if you want to set it manually. Let's take a look at the format of how you would want it. This is kind of more so what I would prefer. And of course, you know, I tend to go with the uh, AM, PM setting, so that's already set. And as you can see, you know, I'm kind of navigating through this with some sense of ease. And I've only had this car for about a day and a half. So it's, it's not something that's uh, complicated to figure out and, uh, you know, work with even without it being a touch screen. So, you know, a little swivel knob. And uh, there's a back button and the start button, I'm assuming, is basically the same as the home button. But um, looks like we went through all the uh, options that you can kind of cycle through with the uh, screen itself. And there looks like to, uh, some redundant. Um, controls down here where you can select your radio. Accessory inventory. Check us out on the of Back to that media again. Navigation. Telephone. Your mute button. This will bring you back to your dynamic settings or dynamic select as it's uh, described on the screen and also right here if that shows clear enough. And on the other side, basically we just kind of have a, a keypad for when you have a phone set up and you want to make a phone call or when you're in a phone call and you need to select options. It also has a it appears to actually be a CD player still. So CDs aren't dead completely just yet. And the on off button is also your volume button. You see you have a, a forward, back and forward for your tracks if you are playing a CD. And there's also an SD card slot, which I'm probably curious to see if that's basically for your, uh, basically your uh, navigation as well as Maybe if you're playing media through an uh, SD card. So right here, as you can see, it is definitely missing uh, some options. I know for sure there's the heated seats options that would be here and here. Perhaps this is for cooled seats. Um, again, with the dynamic select, if I push that, you know, it just takes you here and uh, push and dynamic select you can cycle through eco settings comfort settings as they would describe it sport settings and then if you had it set personally where maybe certain features were worn or off you have your individual settings and you can just push this button here and it automatically changes it And you know, I was actually curious to what the uh, A with the circle kind of, uh, you know, look to it was. And I'm actually curious to know if this is perhaps how you also can turn off your 
auto start and stop so I'm gonna actually kind of go back to settings and see if that's what that is oh and I'm actually a few settings that I kind of need to go back to as well so let's go back let's go back to this uh, auto start first Let's see it is so you actually have another option to turn it on and off right here so pretty convenient and let's go ahead and back back out and uh, get to these vehicle settings as you can see your exterior lighting delayed switch off so basically it's showing you um you know which lights will be delayed and stay on for the amount of time. So let's see. We have 15 seconds. Well, we can start with off. 15, 30, 45 and up to a minute. I believe I had it set at 30. Ambient light brightness. When I got the car, I believe this was turned off, but you know, I think the car looks pretty good when you have you know your ambient lighting on in the dark which is also part of why I have such a dark scenery because I want to see how much of the ambient lighting I could show and as you can see it has like an orange glow here in the doors in the seat front and rear For the cup holder so orange is not you know my real true color preference for ambient lighting but it doesn't look bad with the car so and once you uh, choose to kind of turn it down I believe let's see if it yeah basically it just dims it originally I thought that it um kind of takes the lighting away from certain areas let's see what we have so I'm going to leave this at 5. Locator lighting. I guess if you happen to be looking for your car, you know, the lights will come on. I'm not completely sure if it's just when you approach it or if maybe perhaps also when you're, uh, you know, hit your unlock button. Well, I'm sure it does that when you hit the unlock button, but also when you approach it. That's what I'm curious about. And then your interior lighting delayed click on that and you also have that same option from off all the way up to a, a minute all right now that looks like that finally covers everything let me double check all right so we're good with that so we covered these options here so looking down at the uh, climate control options basically it's it's fairly basic you have your dual zone climate control so basically if you uh, want to change this side you'll see the zone light comes on and it's separate pressing the zone again resyncs it so it kind of covers the uh, entire car with the driver's side option or switch knob um, and this is fairly basic as you can see uh, fan speed high or low the mode of basically where you want your air or heat to be blowing if you want the air to recirculate AC your rear rear Defrost, default, and the max for your front. Defrosting or defogging. And of course, auto if you wanted to kind of set everything for you. And that's kind of basically it for that. Pretty simple. And basically, if you hit auto, 
uh, the way to get out of it is basically select the mode you want on your own and that'll take you out of auto. Okay. So of course, you know, you have your push button start. Paddle shifters for when you want that uh, manual mode. On your right side, basically you have your phone and volume settings. So you have answer, I believe this is basically if you want to use voice commands, let's see. So just hitting this button now, it's speaking for navigation. So let's see what happens if I go into telephone and hit that same button. So it looks like perhaps this button is more so for speaking um, your navigation choice choices. So and then of course you know your mute and up and down for volume. On the left hand side, this looks to control the information cluster in here. All right, I went ahead and gave us some more light since I went over the ambient lighting features, which is the key reason why I shot most of the video in a darker setting. But since we got that covered, you know, let's go ahead and give it some light so we can see things a lot more clear. So I'm actually gonna cycle through here again. And let's go ahead and finish by talking about the information cluster and you know also how do you shift this car through its gears so starting with the information cluster basically you can um, go through your options so when you're in the trip option um, you can have it show your miles per hour total miles of the car and trip miles your uh, fuel consumption and range basically how many miles to E and then here's your eco display what we have here let's take a look and see honestly I'm not quite sure exactly what this is perhaps I'm assuming um, maybe once you start a trip it kind of keeps track of uh, how many miles you've traveled and what your MPG is for that particular trip. Again, your uh, total miles in the vehicle looks like total uh, time driven, average miles, and uh, average miles per gallon. And we're back here. Again, here we are with the navigation, which of course, because there is no memory card, can't really see exactly what this function is all about. Audio. So if you have your uh, radio or any, uh, you know, Bluetooth connectivity or, you know, SD type music playing, it'll give you whatever information is available right here as well. And uh, of course, again, if your telephone is connected, you can go through your Bluetooth options with the telephone as far as phone calls, maybe, uh, let's see what else do we do with that. Yeah, more so for your telephone calls and maybe phone book. Drive assist. You can go through your various uh, drive assist options and the graphic if you want to have that set up.
service information. Your settings. So this looks like um, another way to kind of go through the same settings that I originally started to talk about from the uh, the swivel knob on the uh, infotainment screen. So this looks like uh, basically yet another option as far as kind of using the steering wheel controls to get to your preferences. So when we talk about shifting gears, something different. And uh, like I said, this is kind of my official first time driving a uh, Mercedes vehicle. I test drove a 2007 S-Class, maybe a three, four months ago, if that, maybe one or two months. Uh, but basically, it's fairly simple and kind of the directions are like right in front of your face as far as how to use this here to shift from reverse to neutral to drive. So pushing it up, put your foot on the brake. From park, it'll take you to neutral first, reverse, drive. And pushing the button in, I put it back in park. Now I also believe that if you do, and I'm gonna check it now, if you just do a harder push straight up into reverse, it'll go straight into reverse. And it did. And pressing it straight down will take it straight from reverse to drive. So it's actually quite simple to use. And as let's kind of see here, reverse, drive. I'm gonna do a soft press up for neutral. And Pushing the button in, there we are in park. So also you can see right at the very top of this, you have where your turn signals would show. Outside exterior temperature and time. So the one thing that I can say that really kinda, is, I haven't gotten used to it yet and I don't even know if I will, the same area where you have your turn signal, you also have the area where you set your uh, cruise control. So, let's see if we can get that on the screen. And the thing about having your cruise control switch here, as well as your turn signal, and uh, also where you control your wipers, is sometimes when you look to kind of make a turn, as you can see with the steering wheel kind of in a straight position, see if we can get a good angle here. Just to be focused on the road and reaching for this, you, you know, this kind of interferes. I, I don't think this is the best place for it, but yet and still, you know, it is what it is. And, uh, of course, I guess if you own this car long enough, you'll get used to it and it'll it'll be second nature to be able to know what's what. But for the two days that I've been driving it, day and a half or whatever, it's definitely been something that's kind of gotten my way to have your cruise control option right below your turn signal, uh, you know, wiper blade controls. Other than that, I mean, let's go ahead and Look here is where you control your automatic lights, manual, if you want to just kind of have your uh, parking lights. And one thing I'm curious about is it looks like you have a button for fog lamps and it kind of lights up here but this particular model does not have fog lights. So we have a button and so far I haven't been able to figure it out. So if you own this car and it's actually for something else that I'm not noticing, definitely uh, leave a comment and kind of correct me on exactly what that button is. And kind of looking over here, you know, 
you have your program memory seats for up to three people um, seat controls this one actually kind of has the it, well I should say it does not have the uh, head rest controls but I guess just to kind of have that there so it looks like it's a complete design in here I guess that works and it, the way it's set up you actually can see that you know it's sits in a little bit deeper to kind of let you know that this isn't a functional uh, option and here you have your lock and unlock which is you know fairly normal window controls I believe we have automatic up and down for all four windows yep automatic up and down here we have our trunk release and as far as the fuel cap that is just a manual press so overall um, with this being kind of sort of my first time really spending time in a Mercedes vehicle you know I wanted to make a video that talks about you know the technology at least in this uh, CLA model and um, you know how easy was it for me to figure out more so from uh, just kind of my experience in watching the videos on YouTube and how much would that kind of play its part in me having somewhat of an idea or was I just kind of going to, you know, be lost in the process. And honestly, um, it wasn't too hard to really figure out. And like, you know, of course, maybe that is in part because I've watched so many videos on, you know, the different Mercedes vehicles. But, you know, even if you were like a complete rookie to it, um, and you know, in one of my videos, I had uh, my brother SP actually kind of learning how to shift through the gears, and I kind of purposely didn't tell him. And you know, he figured it out quick enough. You know, no time at all. You know, so it's definitely something that you know, especially with the help on screen and right here, that'll tell you kind of what to do. So you know, overall, you got the Mercedes name, some of the Mercedes tech definitely nowhere near the top of the line but um you know you still you know you feel special when you have you know you're sitting in the seat of a mercedes car no matter how you know uh top or low on the trim level or you know whatever it, it's still a mercedes you know you still got that logo here on your steering wheel this one has a nice you know front design where the logo really stands out in a nice aggressive kind of way so um that's really it for this video just kind of wanted to go over some of the technology as a true first time user to a, a Mercedes car. So definitely make sure you like, subscribe and comment on this video. And I am out.